The long road to college football's national title begins in earnest this weekend. Nowhere are expectations higher than on the plains of Auburn, Alabama. The Tiger football team has a glorious history. One national title, five SEC crowns, Heisman winners Pat Sullivan, and the incomparable Bo Jackson. After struggling in the late 90s, Tommy Tuberville came and steadied the Tigers and has this team poised on the precipice of greatness. USC's storied past produced four national titles and four Heisman winners in less than 20 years. Last season, Pete Carroll and departed Heisman winning quarterback Carson Palmer lifted the Trojans out of a decade-long malaise. Now the Trojan renaissance appears complete and they remain legitimate national title contenders. on CBS moments ago the Tiger won. It allows the faithful of Auburn University one last chance to urge the players on. The men of Troy will not march into the fray unescorted. Members of the band are here as well as members of the student body. And a flyby three of the pilots of the four Harrier Jets, graduates of Auburn University. It's the Home Depot SEC on CBS, a couple of top-ranked teams, the Trojans of USC against the Tigers of Auburn. Good afternoon, everybody. Vern Lundquist along with Todd Blackledge and Jill Arrington. We welcome you to our first game of the season. On a normal afternoon in the fall in Auburn, Alabama, this place becomes one of the truly special pieces of real estate in the national sports landscape. It becomes an ocean of orange, and the 90,000 fans who are here make this a vibrant and pulsating experience. That's on a normal afternoon. Today is abnormal, made so because of the presence of the men of Troy, the University of Southern California football team, making its first visit ever to the Auburn campus. And they come off a wonderful 11-2 season, a top 10 ranking this year. The Tigers, 9-4 a year ago, rated number one by a couple of organizations, all of which makes for a compelling national season opener. <laughs> I'm pumped. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be you exciting. Are. You know, let's start with what we know about these teams. At the end of last year, these two teams were playing as well as anybody in college football. A lot of the key players from last year's teams are going to be on the field today. But what we don't know about these teams, we don't know about their chemistry. Every team develops a new personality. That gets forged in the month of August. We'll know a lot more about these teams in three hours than we do right now. Well, let's talk specifics, Todd. Whom do you expect to uh, stand out today for either team? Well, let's start with Auburn. They love to run the football. For them to have success today, that's got to be part of their formula. And they've got to have big games from a pair of junior tailbacks who are outstanding players. Carnell Williams and Ronnie Brown combined for nearly 1,800 yards last year. Now, Carnell, he's got a little more flash, a little more dash, but a difficult guy to tackle for one guy. Then you can go to Ronnie Brown, who came in and played marvelously when Carnell was hurt. He's about 20 pounds heavier, a little bigger, maybe a little better straight ahead speed. The beauty for Auburn is they're both healthy now, and they can rotate them, and they can have them both fresh in the fourth quarter. That's bad news for any defense. Now, what about Southern California? we got to start with a quarterback. They've got a new quarterback and sophomore, Matt Leiner, and I like what Pete Carroll has told him. He said, hey, Matt, don't think about replacing Carson Palmer, the Heisman Trophy winner. You're succeeding him. He won the job in the summer, clearly, by being a great decision maker and managing the football team. He's got to keep his poise here in Auburn today and find a way to get the ball in the hands of his dynamite playmakers on the outside. Two wide receivers, senior Kerry Colbert and sophomore Mike Williams. For USC to have a chance to win, these two guys have to have big games. And the beauty of having two great wide receivers a defense can scheme to take away one very difficult to take away two cbs sports coverage of the home depot sec on cbs will continue after this message and a word from your local station the home depot sec on cbs is sponsored by the home depot singular wireless miller highlight and 
by Sonic. This afternoon, the Auburn Tigers first on the field. And right behind them, making their first visit ever to Auburn, Alabama. The Trojans of Southern California. USC 11 and two, winners in the Orange Bowl a year ago. Auburn nine and four, ranked number six in the country. The kickoff coming next. USC won the toss. They have deferred the option until the second half. That means Auburn will receive to open the 2003 season. Tommy Tuberville, the head coach of the Auburn Tigers. Pete Carroll, the head coach of the USC Trojans. It is a typically muggy late August afternoon. Temperature of 88 degrees. The humidity at 70%. The forecast for the remainder of the afternoon, partly cloudy. And so much of the conversation, Todd, has involved USC's ability to handle the heat and humidity here. Yeah, and the first half will be much more critical than the second half. It'll cool down here as we get into the second half of this football game, but first half will be very important. Ryan Colleen will kick off. You saw the stats a year ago. This is Carnell Cadillac Williams. He is joined back deep by number 22, Trey Smith. Williams off of a broken fibula suffered mid-season a year ago. at the two. Hands right, cut down as he reaches the 19-yard line, might have gotten to the 20. And let's check in with the third member of our commentary team. Here's Jill Arrington. Well, with USC coming into unfamiliar territory, he set up his team during practice with noise and all kinds of music to assimilate what they knew would be a loud crowd down here in the Deep South, and they are loud. But one thing you can't prepare is the humidity and it's hot out here but they do have on the sidelines a cool cake to close to cool down the players if they get overheated to get them back on the field but Todd it might come down to who has the deepest bench to last in this heat through the fourth quarter here's a handoff to Cadillac Williams heading left and negative yardage on the first play yeah just to follow up on that point that Jill made I mean the first quarter I think we'll see more substitution particularly in the offense and defensive lines by both teams because it will cool down as we get further into the football game. Jason Campbell. This, by the way, he's been a starter off and on for two years. This is the first season opener mm -hmm. he's ever started. He uh, came on and won five, led the uh, Tigers to five of six in the end of the season a year ago. Here's Campbell. Takes the draw, rolls right. Being chased, lets it go on the fly, incomplete. Anthony Mix. Well, we talked about the cool cape. Yeah, we've seen a lot of different devices. You know, this one, I've never seen this one. You actually put the cape on and air condition everything at once. You know, you see the cool zones and the fans, but that's a little different deal. Well, Jill, if that thing starts working, send a couple up here. <laughs> 
Third and 12 at the 18. And this is not the situation Auburn hopes to be in in a consistent way in this football game. This is not their strength. Three wideouts, two to the right. Campbell straight drop back. Gets protection. Now has to scamper to his right. In and out, intercepted. Picked off by the freshman Darnell Bing. Number 20 makes the first big play of his career. The ball tipped and Darnell Bing with the pick. Well, again, third and 12 is not the situation that Auburn wants to be in. It is a run-oriented football team. And watch the pressure that USC is going to get with their front four. They just rush four, and they force Campbell out of the pocket. And then this is dangerous, throwing back across his body, and the ball was actually tipped by Kevin Arbett. And then Bing comes up with the interception. Matt Leinert starting his first game. He's a redshirt sophomore. Hands it off. Left side. Matt Liner, sophomore, last year, the totality of his playing experience behind Carson Palmer. He had two snaps against Colorado. He had three series against Oregon and one snap against UCLA. <laughs> but he won the job, clearly, in a very stiff competition. He won it by making good decisions, and Pete Carroll could not be happier to put him in this situation, this kind of field position right away. Second down and nine. Leinert, the lefty to throw for the first time in his career. It's incomplete. Kerry Colbert got knocked sideways by Carlos Rogers. That's going to be pass interference. Well, this is going to be a battle all day for the Auburn defense. If there is a weak link or a chink in the defensive armor of Auburn, it might be their secondary. Carlos Rogers is the best cover guy. The other corner is Junior Rosegreens, who was a safety last Best year. interference on the defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. Colbert and Mike Williams are outstanding. And there's the hold right there as he tried to run into the slant. Rodgers was in good position, but he can't wrap the arms around him. And a, and a gift for the USC offense. And a first and goal at the four-yard line. One thing Matt Leinert needs to be aware of now, the play clock is down on side of 10. They were late getting this play in. They can't afford to delay a game here. Southern California goes from the eye on first and goal. Hand off right side. There's a spin from Herschel Dennis, the sophomore, who has all of the experience at tailback. The three freshman running backs back him up. I think one of the best players in all of college football this year is Carlos Dansby, number 11, an outside linebacker from Auburn. He's the guy who comes knifing in there, and if he gets those arms around you, he's not going to let go. Dansby, a preseason All-American pick, second down and goal. Steve Smith, a true freshman, winds up split wide left. Here's Leinert deep in the end zone. Touchdown! Matt Leinert's first completion as a collegian goes for a touchdown. And he went to the right guy. A huge wide receiver. Mike Williams is six foot five and every bit of 230 pounds. He was in the slot. He ran the slant. And he's a huge target in there. He's as big as most tight ends. Take a look now what Matt Leinert sees. Now remember, he's six five, so he's got good sight. And he throws to a 6-5 receiver, and that's pitch and catch, baby. Killeen on for the extra point. It's up and it's good. What a way to start for a new quarterback. One for one, and his team's on top. Oh, Matt Leinert might have written the first paragraph in what he hopes will be a lengthy autobiography. Something to tell the kids someday, huh? And if you're Norm Chow, uh, his coach and offensive coordinator, you could not have scripted it better. Get your quarterback, great field position, call a couple safe plays, get a pass interference call, and then he gets a touchdown. Outstanding. Ryan Colleen to kick off for the second time. This is Trey Smith again. This time he grabs it at the one. And Smith 
cuts back to his right after the 20-yard line, and the Auburn Tigers will get it for the second time in the ball game. Another look at the touchdown. Well, this is Mike Williams, and he's going to run a slam, but watch these two guys. These are two new starters on the Auburn defense. Travis Williams, the linebacker, and Karibi Dide is the safety. They both get kind of fooled and out of position on the play, and Mike Williams settles right in between them and gives that quarterback a big target. A lot of returning starters on this Auburn defense, but two new ones got victimized on that play. And the secondary is of concern for the Auburn Tigers. First down and 10, Jason Campbell. One set back. Handoff goes to Ronnie Brown, this time number 23. And let's take a look at the Earthlink starting lineups, beginning with the Auburn offense. You've met Jason Campbell up front. It's Para, Reddick, Lindsey, Monrico, Crittenden, and Marcus McNeil. That right side is huge. Carnell Williams and Ronnie Brown open in the backfield. Obamanu, Courtney Taylor, and Cooper Wallace, the tight end. Tommy Tuberville in his fifth season as the Auburn head coach. Second and nine. Direct snap out of the spread. Little screen, and Obamanu cannot hang on. It is knocked down. Southern California defense and it's an outstanding unit that returns six starters from a year ago very tough to run against and Udeze Patterson Sean Cody off of a knee injury and Omar Nazel a terrific front four Gruta good Lofa Tatupu and Melvin Simmons are the linebackers and the secondary you've already met Darnell Bing he's joined by Arbet Leach and Marcel Orman. Pete Carroll third year head coach Southern California and also the defensive coordinator for the Southern California team he makes all the calls for this good defense on third down straight four man rush into the flat caught by Brown comes left there's Marcel Allman is the first one there and gets a little help from Darnell Bing two third down plays for Auburn both third down and long situations that plays right into the hands of the USC defense and that's because they defended the run on first down two excellent defensive series for the Trojans and now punting for the first time in a ball game for the Auburn Tigers it's a red shirt freshman named Michael Gibson and Kevin Arbett who missed all of last season with a foot injury but was the return specialist two years ago is back to receive it for the Trojans here's Gibson gets it away not terribly deep it will bounce at the 46 Arbett <laughs> oh my there is a flag down on the field but that flag didn't go down nearly as hard as Kevin Arbett did flag at the 48 yard line of Auburn Kevin Arbett missed all of last season with a foot injury the year before he was an all Pac-10 special teams player Last year, USC was last in the conference in punt return and kickoff return. Arbet trying to make something happen. Oh. Wow. Nice to have your best player. After the play was over, personal foul against the receiving team. 15-yard penalty, first down. And so the ball is marked back inside the 26-yard line. But Carlos Dansby giving you just a, a hint of why he's such a special player. He is special. That's the right word for him. He, he makes plays that you can't coach or you can't teach a guy to make. Well, a pretty decent special teams play by Dansby. Time has been called. Southern California, 7-zip, penalized 15 yards for an unsportsmanlike penalty after the punt catch. Now they have a first, 10 at their, first and 10 at their own 26-yard line. Here's Herschel Dennis, got some room. Rogers gets up with him, but a big gain on first down and 10. What a nice power run for USC. They lined up with two tight ends. It's a run formation, and it's an outside zone play, and Dennis just does a nice job of setting up the block by his tight end, Dominique Bird, and then cutting it back inside. When you line up with two tight ends and one back, it balances out a defense, and it makes it easier to run to either side. That's a gain of 22 for the sophomore tailback. Now this is Dominique Bird setting up tight to the left side. 
Leinert, quick hitch. Mike Williams makes the grab across midfield, out of bounds at the 48. Now let's uh, introduce you to the Trojan offense. The offensive line, Jacob Rogers, all packed in. Vandermeer, the Rogers has been hurt uh, with a foot injury. Katnick also missed much of the uh, two a days. Herschel Dennis, Lee Webb in the backfield. Mike Williams, Kerry Colbert, the wideouts. And the tight end, in place of the two year starter, Alex Holmes, is Dominic Bird. Holmes with a back injury, not yet ready to go. On second down, it's Dennis. And a nice play by Travis Williams getting his first start for the Auburn Tigers. Defensively, Williams, one of the linebackers. They've got great depth, particularly in the defensive line. They start Evans, DeMarco McNeil, Spencer Johnson, and Reggie Torbor. Two of the three linebackers we assume you have heard of. Dontarius Thomas, Carlos Dansby. The secondary, a bit of a trouble spot. Rose Green, D.D., Young, and Rogers. Liner pumps. Pressure. Don Terry saw it was Brett Evans coming from the backside, number 94. And he forces him into the arms of DeMarco McNeil. Yeah, I'm not sure he got the first down, but I like the feel and the decision by Matt Liner. He wanted to throw quick. It wasn't there, but he didn't panic. He hung in there as long as he could, and then he went straight up the field and tried to get the first down. Didn't get it, but an excellent decision by the young quarterback. Tom Malone led the Pac-10 in net punt return, net punting last year. Trey Smith waits it at the 10. Here's Malone, the sophomore. Nice high, very deep. This one will come out to the 20-yard line. Midway through the first quarter, Southern California up by seven. Auburn Southern Cal, the season opener, CBS Sports Line, your home for college football. Get exclusive team rankings and live play-by-play -play for top 25 games. Go check out what you're missing at cbssportsline.com or on America Online, enter keyword CBS Sports Line. Campbell and the Tigers come back on offense, third set, unsuccessful so far. Yeah, and I would expect to see them maybe throw the ball on this first down play. They have not been able to run the ball with effectiveness on the two previous first down plays. USC doing a great job with their slanting defense. Double tight end set. Here's Campbell. Aroma Shadu makes the grab. He's out of bounds. Incomplete. And I'm not so sure that Marcel Allman didn't give away with a little push while the ball was in the air. Aroma Shadu made the catch, but he was out of bounds. But I think Allman gave him a shove while the ball was in the air that could have been considered pass interference. Watch Allman. He doesn't see the ball, but he pushed off. And there's the catch and both feet out of bounds. Aroma Shadu stays on the field, comes wide left. Little bump and run by Allman up tight. Double tight end set. This is a check at the line of scrimmage. And what Jason Campbell's doing is trying to run away from USC strength. Hand off up the middle. Cadillac Williams spurts across the 30. That is the first first down for the Auburn Tigers. Well, it starts with Jason Campbell recognizing where the extra defender is. Run away from that, and then watch the vision and the cut by Carnell Williams. Excellent job. Udizi was there to make the tackle, but Carnell Williams, almost impossible for one guy to bring down. Very shifty runner. Missed the last six games last year with a fractured leg. And this is Hugh Knoll's influence as the offensive coordinator. Two tight ends. Let's run that football. Option. And Campbell decked at the 30-yard line, lost a couple. Nice play on the inside. This is a defense that Pete Carroll runs where they slant one way or the other almost every play. And the trick is, if you're an offense, is try to guess right which way they're slanting. There's Hugh Nall. It's a chess match between Hugh Nall, the offensive coordinator, who's also the line coach, and Pete Carroll, who is the defensive coordinator. Hugh Nall in his first season as the offensive coordinator. Up uh, in the booth, Steve Ensminger, his first year as the quarterback coach, he's actually calling the plays. On second down after the loss of three, Campbell has to head right. He's in trouble again. This defense is fast. Uh, you know, we see fast defenses in the SEC, and this defense is just as fast as any defense we see week in and week out in the SEC. That was Frosty Rucker. 
a backup defensive end who transferred from Colorado State that was there to put the pressure on. Frosty Rucker actually redshirted at Colorado State as a linebacker. Transferred, sat out last year, and uh, we will see him quite a bit yeah. today. And another third and long right into the hands of Pete Carroll's defense. See if they've got blitz on their mind. Jason Campbell thinks it's a blitz, and he's checking, and it is a blitz, but it's a zone blitz. Campbell in trouble. Not the swiftest nor most elusive of quarterbacks, and he's down at the 35. It'll be fourth down. Good defense by USC. I mean, they called a blitz, but it's not an all-out blitz with man-to-man -man coverage. It's a blitz with a zone defense behind it. But they still are able to overload this side. But watch, this lineman drops out, and they're playing zone here. So there is pressure, but it's not all out sell the farm pressure. But it still confuses the Auburn offensive line, and they've got to punt the ball game. Jeremy Wells is the deep snapper. Michael Gibson to punt for the second time. But prior to the snap, we've got uh, a motion penalty, and that will cost Auburn five. You know, one thing that I'm seeing right now, when we talk to some of the USC people and defensive people, they were taking it as a, a personal mano a mano physical challenge to stop the run they were great last year movement by the offensive backfield five yards still first down they were the best team in the pac-10 in stopping the run only 83 yards per per game they never allowed a runner to gain over 100 yards but a lot of people say yeah but that's the pac-10 they can't <laughs> run out west how can you stop a good power running team so far they are doing a nice job of stopping auburn's run here's gibson the punt pressure coming he gets wow. it away barely yes he did and it takes a sideways bounce then heads up field and is out of bounds so good field position for Southern Cal man I don't know how he got that thing off oh, I mean there were a couple USC guys in there quickly Dallas Sartz a backup linebacker number 42 almost got this one a 27 yard punt Nada on the return Still raining in New York City. Andre Agassi won the first set and is down love one in the second to Kofelnikov. Whatever happens, we'll be there all day tomorrow. CBS coverage of the U.S. Open Championship. First and ten. Leinert with the touchdown pass. This is Smith going in motion. Flag is down. Leinert fires it out for Williams who cannot hang on and he was open. Let him just a little bit too much. Yeah, I think they're going to get Smith for turning up field a little too soon. Again, he's a true freshman and has had an outstanding summer camp for USC, but that time a little anxious, I think, in turning up field. Now let's check in once again with Jill Arrington. On the weather conditions out here if you look at the field you can see luckily Auburn is completely in the shade on their sideline USC completely in the sun but the good news is USC's got that cool cape working just on that last defensive series Jacob Rogers their left tackle was under there keeping cool it keeps you at 50 degrees so he's fresh to get back on the field he's out there now ready to go we could use about six up here <laughs> about six of them and Jacob Rogers missed most of summer camp declined the penalty and here is Reggie Bush, the freshman running back, one of three freshman running backs. And Reggie Bush, after the penalty was declined, goes over the left side. Well, Jacob Rogers is an all-conference performer, the left tackle. And he, he practiced the first two days of two a days, and then he had kind of a funny injury. He had a tendon injury in his left heel, and he could go straight ahead, but he was having trouble with pass set. And he sat out all the way up until this past Sunday was the first day back. Fortunately for USC, he's a veteran guy who was able to pick it up quickly. Third and five. Quick setup. Pass complete to the tight end, Dominic Bird, and he's now equaled the number of catches he had all of last season. And great protection right now for this USC offensive line. I mentioned that that Jacob Rogers just started practice on Sunday. Actually, last Sunday was the first day that the whole starting unit practiced together because the center, Norm Katnick, had been banged up. Lenny Vandermade had had a little injury in camp. So Sunday was the first day that this starting offensive unit was at full strength. Colbert goes left side, double tight end set now on first down. 
Draw play. Bush breaks the first contact and picks up a couple. Reggie Bush really a sensation in yeah. two days this fall. I think he's the real deal. I mean, they've got three outstanding looking freshmen, and this guy is the flashiest. I mean, of all the good backs that we'll see on the field today, this guy's probably the fastest. I mean, he was a great sprinter in high school, and he has the ability to take it to the end zone every time he touches it. The other two freshmen for USC, Lendale White and Chauncey Washington, are more pounding type running backs. This guy is flashy. Second down, seven. The only setback is Bush. Here comes the blitz. Liner pumps once. Looks deep. Left side. There's Williams. And uh, it's just about impossible. He is so big. And Mike Williams has a first down at the 10-yard line. Well, he's a huge target, but credit that USC offensive line. They picked up the blitz, no problem. And Matt Liner, again, he's 6'5", so he's able to stay in there. Watch the blitz come and watch the offensive lineman just kind of sink in and stone them all. And Liner's able to stay right in there and make the clean throw to Mike Williams. And again, that's a little bit too much cushion to give that guy. 26-yard gain. Here's the handoff to Bush. Oh, it's Herschel Dennis who is back in there. They'll rotate these backs in and out throughout the afternoon. A pass to Williams worthy of another look. Well, again, Matt Liner. He's six foot five. He's a lefty. He's showing the poise that he needs. He's staying in the pocket. He's trusting his protection. A lot of times with a young quarterback, they start to look at the rush, and that means they're not looking downfield at their receivers. You want to feel the rush and see downfield, and that's what Matt Leinart is doing right now. Four wideouts on second down and nine. Leinart looking to his left, drills it low and incomplete, intended for Justin Wyatt, number 24. I think this is a critical part of the game for the Auburn defense. They need to hold USC to a field goal here. This is not a de an offense that's built on playing come from behind and, and, you know, getting into a situation where they have to score a lot of points from behind. A run-oriented team, and right now this defense needs to step up. Now Smith goes wide left. Williams and Colbert both split to the right side. Williams is in the slot. That's where he caught the touchdown the last time. Here's Leinert looking for Williams. It's incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Carlos Rogers defending. And the field goal unit, Ryan Colleen, will come on to try the three-pointer. Now Tommy Tuberville telling us yesterday he felt it important to keep the crowd in this game. And you give up a touchdown, they become dormant, so very significant. And one of the best ways to keep the crowd in the game is to not give up any big plays to Mike Williams. He specifically said we cannot do that. They've given up a couple catches to him already. One for a touchdown. Ryan Killeen from 28 yards away. And it's good. 321 to go first quarter. Trojans by 10. Better than 86,000 on hand at Jordan-Harris Stadium. Tommy Tupperville telling us in our conversation in his office yesterday that this was the most anticipated game in maybe 30 years here. He thought even more so than when Alabama played here for the first time in 1989. Well, they've not had much to cheer about thus far. Here's Colleen to kick off. It's 10-0 Southern California. Short kick. Smith again. Spilled at the 28-yard line. Next Sunday, the NFL on CBS kicks off our Super Bowl season. Here's the lineup for you. 1 o'clock, San Diego, Kansas City, New England, and Buffalo. It's a busy day. Miami, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, Carolina, and Cincinnati all at home. And, of course, our coverage all begins with Jim, Dan, Deion Sanders, and Boomer Esiason next Sunday at noon. The NFL on CBS. Average starting field position. A difference of 30 yards. Yeah, and this is the best for Auburn right here. See what they can make of it. There's the handoff. Boy, the running game has been non-existent. Mike Patterson, the defensive tackle, got the penetration. Nowhere to go for Carnell Williams. And right now, again, they're guessing right. Pete Carroll is doing a nice job of guessing right on where Auburn wants to run the football. Again, let's get back to this run defense. Last year, they played against some good runners. Chris Brown of Colorado, Darren Sproles of Kansas State, Ontario Smith of Oregon, and they shut them all down. 
And here's a play fake. Campbell wants to go deep, steps up, goes short instead. And it's caught by Courtney Taylor, who has been the uh, most outstanding wide receiver in two days, and that gives Auburn its second first down of the ball game. And a good confidence play for Jason Campbell because he hung in there. He hasn't had much success so far, but he hung in there and he found his favorite receiver right now, and that's Courtney Taylor. Plus, you get Courtney Taylor, who you expect to be a big time player for you this year, you get him involved in the football game. Courtney Taylor, a former high school quarterback, redshirted a year ago and the Auburn defensive back said you got to get him on the field we can't stop him during uh, practices first and ten handoff they try to sweep to the left side Carnell Williams wow. fights for yardage that should have been for an average back about a three yard loss because Sean Cody shot right in there and had both hands on Carnell Williams watch the effort the strength of Carnell Williams. Should have been a two-yard loss. Instead, it's a heck of a run for Carnell Williams. That didn't look like a Cadillac. That looked more like an SUV right here. <laughs> Second down and four. 10-0 Southern California. That becomes a power eye formation. Williams has some room. He's jolted, but he's got a first down at the 46-yard line. Yeah, they lined up in a little different type of a set, and then they went on a quick count. This was a good job by Hugh Nall. Line up in more of a power set. You got this extra tight end in there. It's kind of a short yardage formation, and then go on the quick count. And they kind of outnumbered and outflanked the USC defense that time. Brandon Johnson, the fullback, did a great job of leading it up in there. Brandon Johnson, number 45, a very vital part of this offensive set. Now double tight ends, one running back. Two wide receivers. Again, Jason Campbell is checking probably to a run away from the strength. And Williams stopped essentially no gain on the play. One fifteen to go, opening quarter. See, last year when Auburn played USC. Troy Palomalu was the hard-hitting, run-defending safety for USC. And they felt like whichever way he went, the slant of the defense went the other way. Now, he's not on this team anymore. He's playing for the Steelers. So they're trying to figure out how are they rotating this defense. And on this series, Hugh Nall's guessing right. Here comes the corner blitz. Campbell in jail. Matt Grudegood. I think is an excellent football player. Now, he doesn't really look like it. He doesn't look like Carlos Dansby. He's 5'11", he's 215, he was a defensive back, he got too big to play safety, they moved him to linebacker, but he is extremely active. 81 tackles last year, he led the team, he led the team in sacks, he led the team in tackles behind the line of scrimmage, and he made a big play there. Loss of five, third and 15 at the 50. Out of the spread, two wide receivers left side. Screen pass, right side. Carnell Williams. That's going to be a fumble. a fumble if he is ruled oh, a possession. Oh. The umpire is calling it incomplete. Larry Leatherwood. I thought maybe he had possession. Again, we see the speed of the USC defense. Closing on this, Will Poole, a redshirt senior, knocked that ball loose. I still think he had possession. I think you're right. I think Auburn caught a break. Cody Bliss, another freshman putter. He's a high school graduate last spring. He's on the punt now after Gibson almost got that last one blocked. Yeah, Tommy said this guy is probably better, and he may be in there quickly. Cody Bliss averaged 46.9 last year at the Brentwood Academy. And I'll bet you after that effort, he's going to be the punter the next time they have to give up the ball. Cody Bliss, Brentwood, Tennessee. That's the end of the first quarter. Our score, 10-0 USC. We'll return to Jordan Hare right after this message and this word from your local station. We welcome you back to Jordan-Hare Stadium on the campus of Auburn University. Southern California leading 10-0 as we get the second quarter underway. Glenn Lundquist, Todd Blackledge, 
and Jill Arrington. Here's Liner. Goes back to his right and makes the catch, and Mike Williams is free all the way to the 25-yard line. A 15-yard gain for Mike Williams, who has a touchdown catch. That was the first score of the game, followed by a field goal. And Southern California with a big play to open the second quarter, and they've dominated so far. Yeah, they really have. And I was just about to say before that play, this is a big test for Matt Leinert now. Bad field position. They've controlled the game. Stay in control. You know, make the right play. Don't do anything dumb with the football. And he made a great read and came back to the single coverage to Mike Williams. First down play, Leinert. Hand off right side, Herschel Dennis charges out to the 29-yard line. There are two things that I'm incredibly impressed with so far in this football game for USC. Number one is the poise of Matt Leinert. I mean, he just looks like a cool veteran. He doesn't look like he's playing his first game as a starter. He looks like he's in full command and full control. And the other thing is how well USC is doing against Auburn's run. I mean, those two things in that first quarter is what has stood out in this football game. Second down and six. Line it with a quick setup again. Boy, he does look sharp. There's Williams. And a poor effort at tackling. And Mike Williams with another catch. Well, he replaces a Heisman Trophy winner. Carson Palmer and Matt Liner talked about that effort. I'm trying to block out everything. I'm just trying to play smart and know what I got to do, you know, play by play. I can't, you know, think about the crowd or think about what they're doing. I just got to focus in on what my job is and leading my team, and, you know, that's what I plan on doing. Yeah, I don't know if it's just a California thing, but these guys are so cool. I mean, quarterback <laughs> from California, I mean, it just, stuff just doesn't bug him. I mean, he's not bugged by this. Nah. Screen pass. Caught behind the line by Reggie Bush, and DeMarco McNeil was right there. Yeah, well, DeMarco McNeil is a veteran guy. He's a senior. He's healthier than he's been in about three years. He's had a bad knee, an arthritic knee. He's about 20 pounds lighter than he's played, and he, uh, he reacted quickly to that screen play. And one of the few negative plays that we've seen registered by this Auburn defense. That is a loss of six. It's second down, 16. One setback. Bush coming left. Good pursuit defensively this time. Don Terrius Thomas, number 54. Yeah, and Travis Williams. Both those linebackers read and got there quickly. Sometimes it just takes, uh, you know, a big play by somebody. Maybe that play by DeMarco McNeil did something. Watch these two guys. Don Terrius and Travis Williams. They got there. They had great leverage. Good defensive play against the run. Third down and 16. Again, Matt Leiner needs to be smart with the football. If something's there, great. If not, take what you can and punt the football. Auburn will send the four-man rush. Leiner, Mike Williams, hit, fumble. That is ruled an incomplete pass again. Dontarius Thomas thinks he's got six. But, uh, well, we've seen one both ways now, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, we sure have. Carlos Rogers was there in coverage. And, the, you know, the thing about defending Mike Williams on a slant, it's he's almost unguardable because he's so big. Watch the quick slant. His body's so big you can't get around him. But the next best thing you can do is to try to drill him when he catches the football. And that's what Carlos Rogers did. He drilled him right in the back, and Mike Williams was bobbling that the whole way. Good call by the officials on the incomplete. Now, that was not a catch. Nope. Tom Malone on the punt for the second time. Trey Smith. They came after him. Nice and high, and this will go out of bounds. And it's going to result in a very short kick. It was way left. Auburn took a shot at that one. USC had two punts blocked last year. Tom Malone's got a great leg, but he better get it off quicker than that. 25-yard punt. 10-0 USC. And even a dozen minutes to go before the halftime break, Auburn with its best field position of the game now to open the drive. They start at their own 40-yard line. But they have not been able to do what they do best, and that's run the football. Only 21 yards on 11 carries. Ronnie Brown is a tailback now with Brandon Johnson, his fullback. 
And again, Jason Campbell changing the play. Just does get it off. Campbell goes deep left side. Little hitch and go. Time now for the SEC moment presented by Sonic. And for more, let's go down to Jill Arrington. Uh, Vern, the 1987 Citrus Bowl was the first meeting between USC and Auburn. Auburn's offense was led by All-American running back Brent Fullwood, who rushed for 152 yards and a touchdown. But that Tigers defense held Trojan quarterback Rodney Peet to only 113 yards while throwing four interceptions. Auburn went on to win it 16 to 7, recording the Tigers' 500th all-time win. With only 21 rushing yards today, they better pick it up for Auburn if they want to control this game, Vern. Yes, indeed. There's a play fake. Campbell looks deep. The comeback pattern. Terrific downfield coverage. Kevin Arbett really had a fine job of covering the intended receiver. Well, it's excellent coverage because Frosty Rucker, who's the end, he has no idea. Watch number 90. He still thinks the running back has the ball. He's chasing the play, and he's got to be out there to contain the quarterback. But because the coverage was so good downfield, it, it didn't turn out to be a big play, and it brings up another long third down situation. Third and eight. And time has been called. 11 minutes, 47 seconds to go. Tommy Tuberville's team struggling thus far. They trail by 10. Catherine Morris stars in the next great crime drama from the producer of CSI. Don't miss the premiere of Cold Case, Sunday, September 28th, right after 60 Minutes. Third and long again. She's short. A very tall lady. <laughs> third down eight. Auburn yet to convert a third down. Their average need has been 11 yards. Here comes the blitz. Campbell. Steps up, fires it, man open. It's Courtney Taylor. They've got a first down on a third down conversion for the first time this afternoon. And a nice job by that Auburn offensive line. It was a blitz, but it was a zone blitz. And this time, there was no confusion. They picked it up, and Jason Campbell was able to hang right in the pocket and make the throw to Courtney Taylor. This play took a while to develop. There's the blitz coming, but it's a zone defense, and here's Courtney Taylor. Just finds the hook area. And a big first down conversion for the Auburn offense. That's a gain of 15 and a first down at the USC 43 yard line. Ronnie Brown goes left, tries to use a block of Brandon Johnson, but he couldn't get far enough upfield. Nice play by Sean Cody. I mean, this is a guy who is so excited to be back on the field for USC. Injured his knee midway through last year. Watch him knife in there. Number 85. He beat. Beats the block of Monrico Crittenden, number 84, and doesn't let go of Ronnie Brown until help comes. Sean Cody, who grew up a Notre Dame fan, his dad, a big Fighting Irish fan, he said he didn't make his decision between the two schools until the night before letter of intent signing. Here's Campbell. It's caught by Taylor at the 40-yard line. He pays a price. Boy, Melvin Simmons just drilled it. I'm going to tell you what, now, these are two physical defensive football teams. Courtney Taylor fighting for extra yardage. He stood up, and Melvin Simmons and Grudegood come and just put the wood on him. Man. Melvin Simmons, one of two captains, a one-time participant in the program at Washington State before transferring to Southern Cal. Third and long again. Here's Campbell. Let's it go. Got a man open. And he drops the ball. Ben Obamanu had a first down plus. Just about every third down play, USC is zone blitzing. And the last couple times, the Auburn offensive line has picked it up pretty well. Jason Campbell stepped up in the pocket, and you can't throw it much better than this. Obamanu's got to make that catch. It looks like he got a little distracted with where the sideline was, and Jason Campbell knew they missed a great opportunity right there. Watch for the fake punt. This is the area they might do it. Brandon Johnson is the guy they might snap it to. 
They look at a fourth and eight, and Bliss does get the snap nice and high, and a fair catch called by Arbet at the 11 yard line. Nine forty five to go first half. Pete Carroll's USC Trojans lead by ten. Ouch. Tuesdays this fall on CBS. You know what this feels like right now to me is this is Carlos Dansby time for Auburn. They've been pretty much stymied and he is the kind of guy that can make the unusual play. Here he is right here. I just have a feeling he's about ready to make something happen. Leinart has played very well in the first quarter and a half. Here's a handoff. Dennis cut down as he gets to the 17 yard line. Carlos Rogers with a fine tackle on Herschel Dennis. You're not kidding because uh, Dennis had some room. If he gets away from Carlos Rogers, he's got a lot of open territory. That is an excellent open field tackle by Carlos Rogers on Herschel Dennis. Leinert, 7 of 11, 69 yards. He's found Mike Williams five times. And he's calling signals now on second down and five. Hand off, up the middle. Dennis, spin move. Donnie Young, number 10, made the tackle. Well, we've talked about Matt Leinert being a a cool California quarterback, kind of a surfer dude, but uh, here's more from Jill. That's right. Talk about cool. Matt Leinert's girlfriend, Veronica Kay, was a national high school surfing champion in 1997. She's now a professional surfer and has an endorsement deal with the ever popular Roxy Clothing Company. She's also starred in a TV show, Boarding House. Veronica's advice to Matt was keep your head up, never have that, never give up attitude. He seems to be doing pretty good today. Pretty poised out there, huh, Todd? Excellent poise. <laughs> Outstanding poise. There's a big play. Doug Langenfeld, a junior college transfer from Charleston, South Carolina. He played his junior college ball at Reedley College in California, and he just gets off the ball. Great job, just, just beats the block. Just his quickness got him across the line of scrimmage, and he was there waiting for the ball carry. Loss of five, second down and 15. Langenfeld actually worked as a forklift operator when he did not qualify academically right out of high school. Here's Liner. Nice poise there. And Greg Gunther, the backup tight end, number 44, makes the catch. Gunther, who is a starter on the basketball team after football is over. I saw him against Arizona last year. 10 points and 10 rebounds. Double double. That's pretty good. Yeah, he can play. He's a big target, too, now. I mean, six foot eight for your tight end. A nice target to throw to. Third and nine. Kerry Colbert has only had one ball thrown to him. He's in the slot up here, number 83. Keep your eye on him on this third down play. Pressure, Reiner, tipped, incomplete. Almost a terrible decision by Matt Liner. It was a bad decision because the Auburn defense won on that play. Jay Ratliff was in there with the pressure, and that's one where the young quarterback probably should have just taken the sack. He almost threw a dangerous interception. But credit Jay Ratliff for getting in there and putting the pressure on the quarterback. Tom Malone to punt for the third time, and Trey Smith awaits it at the 30. And they almost got the last one. Return is on this time. Boomer. It is. Smith drifts all the way back to the 14-yard line. Good. And a wonderful downfield play. Will Poole, number 28. Special teams highlight for the USC Trojans. Welcome back to Auburn, everyone. Just a reminder, Spencer Tillman will join me for the Earthlink Halftime Report, and we'll get you caught up on a busy day of college football, including the dawning of the latest era in Alabama football. How did Mike Shula do in his Crimson Tide debut? We'll tell you on the Earthlink Halftime Report.
All right, Tim, thank you. And on the field, the Auburn Tigers trailing by 10. You know, I think the Auburn defense has kind of settled into this football game now. They've got their feet under them. It's time for the Auburn offense to get a little more productive. They had that drop pass on the last series, and they don't have great field position here. And the play clock expired. Now that, that should never, ever happen. Out of a timeout. Out of a timeout, you run onto the field, and you get a delay a game. Again, now, Auburn's got a little different setup. First down. Hugh Nall is the offensive coordinator and the offensive line coach. Steve Ensminger is the quarterback coach who's up in the boot. Here's the play clock down here. Steve Ensminger is calling the plays. They're signaling it in through the running back coach, Eddie Grant. There's Steve Ensminger. So a little bit of different chain of a command than you see with other teams. Here comes the blitz, the handoff, Ronnie Brown around the right side. A flag is down, and this one uh, looks like it's going to go further to the north. It'll go against Auburn. Now, one of the things that I think Pete Carroll and his extensive NFL background has done for him, in the NFL, I think coaches do a great job of, of adjusting on the fly. When they see a team do something offensively, they make a quick adjustment to it. Oh. Face mask on USC will give Auburn some breathing room here, but you know, I look at what they're doing in this first half. Last year in this ball game, they gave up 246 yards of offense to Auburn. During in the, the run first play, half. personal foul, face mask. Now this one comes all the way out to the 32 yard line and Pete Carroll trying to get some information as to whom they called it on. It wasn't on the tackle the ball carrier. It was away from the play somewhere involving another Trojan defender. Nonetheless a costly penalty for Pete Carroll's defense. And a first down Auburn at their own 32 yard line. Brown comes in motion and sets up wide to the right. Campbell comes his way and overthrows him. Campbell has been very erratic. Well, and he telegraphed that one. And Kevin Arbett, number 30, was reading it all the way. And they brought Brown out there, and Jason Campbell was looking there all the way. And Kevin Arbett saw that as well. Second down and 10. Silas Daniels, the lone receiver wide left now, top of the screen. Draw play. Contact made behind the line. And uh, let's take another look at that face mask. Yeah, it happened inside. Watch Mike Patterson grab the face mask of the center, Danny Lindsay. It's away from the play, but the umpire is staring right in there. And there it is right there, the tug on the helmet, the face mask of Danny Lindsay. And 15 yards for Auburn, but yet another third and long for the Auburn Tigers. Now third and nine at the 33. Spread formation. Campbell steps up. Nobody open. He'll have to run. Gets a great block from Ronnie Brown, but he is short of the first down at the 41-yard line. We have seen a couple big hits by Will Poole. I think we're going to have a fourth down situation. That was a good decision by Jason Campbell to run. He didn't see anything. Now this, even though they're on their own 40, this is where we were, we're going to see a fake punt here. They've got a spread formation, and it's a direct snap to Brandon Johnson, number 45. They only need one yard or two yards for the first down. Here's Brandon Johnson right here. Watch the fake punt. On the inside. Jeremy Wells is the snapper. Nope. Nope. Tommy tricked us, didn't he? Yes, he did. <laughs> so the punt, 40 yards, nothing on the return. Well, I've been waiting since the Sun Bowl in El Paso, Texas, last December 31st to introduce the next segment. It is time now for the AFLAC trivia question of the day. You're in fine mid-season form. <laughs> Been practicing. How many conference titles has Auburn won? Conference titles. Uh, 
He is conference titles. I don't want to give it away. Here's Liner handing off to Reggie Bush. Bush goes right. Spencer Johnson with the tackle. Reggie Bush, we've talked about three freshman tailbacks. This fellow finished third in the 100 meters in the state high school in California last year with a time of 10.45. He averaged 12 yards per carry over his high school career. A little less than that this afternoon. Yeah. But he does have that breakaway speed, and if he gets out into the open field, he's going to be tough to catch. Second down, 11. Deep handoff, Bush. Cuts it back. Tries to find space. Flag is down. This is probably going to be a hold against USC. Yep. We want to get technical. I guess that's illegal use of the hands. Bobby Gaston would prefer that we get technical. Let's do it. Bobby, who is the director of officiating in the Southeast Conference. A legal block in the back. During the run, block in the back by the offense, 10 yards, repeat second down. Now Pete Carroll in his third year, great recruiting class this year, judged by some who uh, specialize in that sort of thing is the uh, yeah. best in the country. Bush, Chauncey, Washington, Lendale White. Lendale comes from suburban Denver area. Played at Denver South and Littleton Chatfield there and became the all-time leading rusher in Colorado high school history. High school coach was Dave Logan, whom you remember. Mm -hmm. Former Cleveland Brown. Right. And here is Dennis getting a couple. Dontarius Thomas, number 54, makes the tackle. Dontarius Thomas graduated last spring, has his degree in management information systems. He's one of six young men on this Auburn squad who've already earned their degrees. Played high school ball at Perry, Georgia, about an hour south of Macon, and uh, had to make a decision to come back this year for his senior season instead of uh, opt to play on Sunday. He and Carlos Dansby made those decisions independent of each other, but key for Auburn's hopes this year. Third and 16 at the 13. Herschel Dennis. And it'll be fourth down from the 23-yard line. Pretty conservative play call by Pete Carroll and Norm Chow, but they would be thrilled to go into the locker room up by 10. There's a player down at the 15-yard line. Lanny Vandermaid. Left guard. A four year starter for the Trojans. Well, Jacob Rogers has been hurt through camp, as has Norm Katnick, the center. And Vandermade, they're looking at his right ankle. Take a look at him. Here he is, right in here, number 78. And his right ankle is going to get rolled on right yep. there. An inadvertent play. Man, you got big bodies flopping around on each other in the trenches, man. That is a, some dangerous action. The good news for Lenny Vandermade is it's almost halftime. And if it's not too serious, he'll have a little bit of a break here to get some treatment, maybe get it retaped or rewrapped and try to get back in this football game. That's good to see him walking off under his own power. Now there is a contingent of Southern California fans here in this uh, sea of orange. 86,000 plus the USC faithful located in the northeast corner of Jordan Harris Stadium. There they are. More than six of the Some of them. Well, that's in the upper end zone. Those are really the Euchre seats. <laughs> wow. That is nosebleed area. Yeah. Travel all this way and get a seat there. <laughs> I'd be firing my travel agent. Here's Malone with the punt. We've got under three to go. First half, Trey Smith gathers it in, sure-handed. And this will be the best field position for Auburn in the ball game. A 43-yard punt, Trey Smith with 11 on the return. 
Well, the match has been suspended at the U.S. Open. They got underway and then uh, the rains began to come. Andre Agassi won the first set in his match against Gafelnikov. Full coverage tomorrow beginning at 11 o'clock Eastern Time as CBS presents the U.S. Open. First down and 10. Here's Campbell. Wants a bunch. Overthrows Courtney Taylor, who then lost his helmet in the hit with Jason Leach. <laughs> a helmet snapper. Man. I mean, Jason Leach, at first I thought, man, if he plays the ball, he might get an interception because this ball was thrown ill-advisedly Ill by Jason Campbell. But Leach says, no, I think I'll go for the hit. And it's a good hit. Shoulder first, not helmet first. And Courtney comes up without his. Physical football. Both these teams, very, very physical. Oh, you heard of a D cleater. That was, <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Second and 10. Zone blitz look. And here they come. They'll pick up by Cadillac Williams. Campbell has to run. And completes the pass at the 49-yard line. Ben Obamanu, who dropped uh, that sure first down, earlier in this quarter heads inside up, the 10 and heads up play by Jason Campbell rather than force it and try to get all of it he dumped it off underneath and he brings up a third in a manageable situation they have had so many long third down situations this is third and six much easier to convert third and six from the 49 with 228 to go before the break 10 nothing Southern Cal scored on its first possession Matt Weiner to Mike Williams and then got a 28-yard field goal. All of that in the first quarter. Campbell with pressure again. He's got Jarris McIntyre, number 81. And the ball has been moved inside the 35-yard line for the first time tonight by the Tigers. Oh, backup wide receiver, Jarris McIntyre, probably the fastest of all the wide receivers, gets good separation from our bet and then gets that speed to the inside. He kind of jammed himself off of our bet, got the separation, and Jason Campbell able to find him over the middle. McIntyre's first catch, an 18-yarder. First catch of the season. And a first and 10 with 2.03 to go before the break. Play fake. Campbell looking deep. Has to run. Good decision. Yep. Good decision. I mean, don't make a bad play right here. Sometimes the defense wins, you know, and, and a young quarterback, that's one of the hardest lessons that you have to learn. Jason Campbell, he's been around the block. He's played enough games to know sometimes they guess right, sometimes they cover all my receivers. Just don't make a bad play. And so Jason Campbell out of bounds with the loss of two at second down and 12. Three wide outs, split left. Carnell Williams, the lone setback. Campbell, that ball is tipped in the line. Sean Cody. Sure was, Sean Cody. They ran a little twist on the inside. Cody's the defensive tackle, watch him twist in there. Ran a twist with the other tackle and got his hands up and knocked the football down. Just kind of drove right through the block of the center, Danny Lindsay. Auburn Tigers set out in the first half only one time last year. That was in the Capital One Bowl. They came back and won it 13 to 9. Campbell 6 of 16. Very modest numbers here in the first half. Lindsey snaps they it They didn't back. get it off, did they? No flag. Now he throws it away, and he does manage to dump it. No, there's a flag at Campbell's feet. He well, was not outside the tackle no, spot. You're right. He was not outside the tackle spot, and that's probably going to be intentional grounding. You've got to get outside that area and then throw it past the line of scrimmage. There is no foul. There was a receiver in the air. And now they're saying there was a receiver, but this was a different look. Only three defensive linemen, but they still brought pressure. Again, it's not an all-out blitz, but it's enough pressure to confuse the Auburn offensive line. 
You got two guys running in there free, and you got a bunch of blockers up there blocking air for Auburn. And it was a nice disguised defense on third down for USC. And Cody Bliss is on the punt again. Replaced Michael Gibson after the second punt. Jeremy Wells is the deep snapper. He's one of the six who has already graduated from Auburn. Nice and high by Bliss. Now see what kind of coverage they get. They get good coverage, and it's down to five. Cody Bliss, nice pooch punt. And good downfield coverage, and it is time for the answer to the Aflac question of the day. How many conference titles has Auburn won? Nine. That is the Southern Intercollegiate Athletic Association. Then the Southern. Fool me. From the five. 32 to go before the break. Only oh, Webb the fullback. That's a gain of four on first down. Herschel Dennis into Spencer Johnson's arms. Auburn has two timeouts left. See if they try to stop the clock here. If they would have stuffed them on that play, they would have used one. Yeah. But that was a good solid run for five yards by USC. You see what Tommy Tupperville is just asking. How many timeouts do we have? I mean, if you stuff them or knock them back on that first down play, you use one right now, and you hope that you can force a punt from deep in their territory. But that was a good, strong run by the Trojans. And here's another. Dennis out to the 13. Coming up on the Earthlink Halftime Report, Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman. Good to have them with us here in Auburn. They'll be with you live, and they'll get you caught up on this busy first weekend, first full weekend of college football. A special report on the beginning of the Mike Shula era at Alabama. The Earthlink Halftime Report. Well, I just can't emphasize enough how strong of an effort this has been from the Pac-10 representative here in a hostile environment. They have dominated things up front, particularly with their defense. Here's the handoff again, and uh, that might be enough. It will be a first down, and that's the final play of the first half. Touchdown pass from Matt Leonard to Mike Williams after a Darnell Bing interception. That gave USC a 7-0 lead. And then a short punt set up a short drive, culminated in a 28-yard field goal. Auburn has not threatened. They did uh, have a drop pass at the 10-yard line of USC midway through the second quarter. They also managed to get to the 35 before being forced upon a moment ago. And let's go down to Jill, who's with Tommy Tuberville. Uh, Coach Tuberville, after a slow start, your defense has stepped up for you in the second quarter. But what about your running game? We've heard a lot about it. How do you get Carnell and Ronnie involved? Well, they're putting eight, nine people in the box, and we've got to throw it. And, and uh, one thing, when we throw the ball, we don't have time to throw it. Jason's having to scramble. So we've got to do a better job with pass protection. And uh, but we've got to run the ball. We can't go out there and throw it ever down. But uh, we'll be out. We're, we'll come back. All right, Coach. Thanks a lot. All right, Joe, thank you. That's the end of the first half. Our score 10-zip. Tim and Spencer, join us here for the Earthlink Halftime Report. After this word from your local station. Charlie Sheen and Two and a Half Men from your CBS Monday, September 22nd after Raymond.